Behavioral interview questions are incredibly popular. They're also some of the more difficult questions to answer in the interview process. And when you're interviewing with Home Depot, it'll be no different. They'll absolutely have behavioral interview questions that you are going to have to answer if you want to get a job. In today's video, I'm going to give you five actual behavioral interview questions you will be asked when you interview with Home Depot. And I'm going to teach you from a recruiter's perspective, how to answer them to increase the likelihood that you get a job offer. Now, this is video two in a five-part series, so if you haven't seen the first, make sure you go watch that video. And at the very end of this video, I will actually direct you to the next one. It'll be a button right here on the screen. All right, let's get started. Now, first and foremost, what is a behavioral interview question? Well, it's a question that starts with the phrase, tell me about a time when, or can you give me an example of a time when? The theme here is they're asking about a previous situation and they're having you walk through how you handled it. It's because past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior and they wanna know how you're going to be as an employee. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to teach you how do you go about answering these? Well, there's actually a system for answering these. It's called the STAR technique, situation, task, action, result. This is a framework for walking through your examples so you do it in a way that is coherent, effective, and is going to achieve the desired outcome of answering the question well. So whenever they ask you a question, make sure you use this. What was the situation you were in? What was the task that you were completing? What was the specific action that you took? And then what was the outcome? What was the result? And when it makes sense, throw an L on the end for lesson. Was there anything that you learned during the situation that you implemented for the future? Okay, let's get into some of the specific questions. Now, the first question is an absolute classic for anything customer facing, and it's tell me about a time when you went above and beyond for the customer. Now, a few things here are really important. This is gonna be a situation in your, um, you know, in your career, right? So I can't give you a specific example, but when you're answering this, it is really important to use a STAR technique. What was the situation? What was the task? What was the action you took and what was the result? But you wanna make sure that they can feel the enthusiasm here right? This is about helping customers. They're going to want people in this role who feel enthusiastic about helping the customer. So that should bleed through your answer. They should feel passion for helping people. You also want to give them an example that is actually above and beyond. You know, if your job is to help people find an item and your example is you helping someone find an item and there's no difficulty there, that's not above and beyond. That's your, that, you know, that's your job. So make sure you give them an example that is actually above and beyond, um, and then it needs to end with the, um, the customer being super satisfied. It was a great experience for them, right? So that's, that's key here. So I'm going to answer this for you, um, just using a, a made up example, so you can hear what it might sound like. Well, that's a great question. So I was working at Walmart, and I was working in the electronics department, and I had a customer come in and they asked about a specific video game that um, we were supposed to carry. Unfortunately, we were sold out of that video, uh, that video game. So I told the customer this and they were incredibly disappointed, but I said, hold on, let me see if I can get it ordered in for you. So what I ended up doing is I ended up calling the three closest stores. The first two did not have it, but the third one finally did. And what I ended up doing is I ended up asking that customer if we would like it ordered to their house. We had it ordered to their house with no extra charge and they ended up getting the game and they were thrilled with the result and they ended up leaving very happy. So th that's an example, right? In this case, you know, I talked about, you know, there was enthusiasm, there was energy. I gave the situation, they wanted a game, there was the problem, they didn't have one. I went above and beyond, not just said, hey, sorry, we don't have it. I ended up calling multiple stores to identify a solution and then they were happy. And that's kind of a framework for answering this question in a way that is going to make sense. Now, it's gonna be an example from your career, but think of one that is similar to that and deliver it in a similar way. My advice, write it down. So write this down and then practice going through it. You don't wanna sound overly rehearsed, but it's important to make sure that you include all the details. All right, let's go to the next one. Hey, before we go to the next one, do me a quick favor. If you are finding any value in this video, please hit that like button. It helps the channel, it is free for you, and it motivates me to make more videos like this. Also, it tells YouTube I don't suck. So if you don't hit it, you are literally telling YouTube I suck. So I guess that is kind of up to you. The next question is, tell me about a time you were working with a coworker and they made an error and you had to fix it. How did you handle that situation? This is a very specific question. So first and foremost, you might not have an example for this. If that is the case, say, you know, I can't think of a time in my background where that happened to me. Um, however, 
You know, I have been part of a team and I think it's really important to understand that people make mistakes and part of your responsibility as a team is to cover for each other. So if I was in that situation, what I would do is I would work to fix the mistake as quickly and efficiently as, as possible. I would share with the coworker, the coworker what happened and help them understand what they could do differently next time and I would move on with my day. Something like that, like showing them, hey, hasn't happened to me, but hypothetically, here's how I would handle it. Now, your example needs to be similar to that, right? You're gonna be working with people and people make mistakes and it is important that they hear in your answer that it wasn't a big deal for you. You didn't get upset, you didn't overreact. Instead, your first inclination wasn't to blame, it was to fix. So when you're giving your answer, make sure that they don't, they don't feel like you were uh, irritated at your coworker, your teammate. Instead, you wanted to jump up and help resolve the issue. And that's how you handled it. And that should, that should be what comes out here. Um, so find an example that works for you, but make sure they feel it in your voice, right? You are not upset. Mistakes happen. And more important than what happened or who caused it was fixing the issue. So you can do the best thing for the team. Make sure they feel that in your answer. This next question is, can you tell me about a time where you worked as a member of a team and a problem arose? How was it handled? Now, first and foremost, you should probably be noticing a theme here. The last two questions were teammate related. So clearly being a good team member is important to Home Depot. So as you're answering questions, as you're interviewing, you might want to throw that into your, some of, you know, some of your answers being like, you know, I like working as part of a team. One thing that motivates me is being part of a team. In the past, my favorite roles, I have been in part of a well, you know, a high performing team. Things like that are little things you can sprinkle throughout the rest of your interview that are going to make you come off um, you know, as a great fit for their organization, given the emphasis they put on being a good team player. Now, in terms of the answering it, make sure you use the STAR technique, situation, task, action, result. It's kind of similar to the last one in the sense that there is an issue, but instead of being upset by it, instead of being demotivated by it, you were solution oriented and you did what was best for the team and what was best for the company and that was your primary focus. So find a situation in your background in which your company, your team experienced an issue. And as part of a team, you worked to find the solution and you had a good attitude about it and ultimately you ended up resolving an issue. So give them an example that kind of encompasses all those things. Be positive as you go through exactly what happened. Use the STAR technique and you'll do great. This next question is maybe the most classic question when it comes to anything people facing and customer related. Um, and that's, can you tell me about a time when you worked with a difficult uh, customer? And I've, I've answered this question many, many times in video before. And there's a few things you need to do. One, you have to let them know that that's part of the job and that's okay. If you're gonna be dealing with people, that will happen from time to time. Two, you're not going to take it personally. You won't be offended. You understand they're not mad at you. They're mad at the situation. And your job is to hear them, resolve it, and make sure they leave happy. That's what needs to come across in your answer. So it might sound something like this. Ah, you know, that is actually something that's happened a few times to me. You know, in my opinion, if you're working in retail, if you're working in a customer service role, that is going to happen. So you have to be prepared to deal with it. Now, just from, you know, my approach to it, I always, you know, say to myself, look, Ben, they're not mad at you. They're mad at the situation. So what can you do to help them? So I was working at Walmart and a customer came in and they were mad because they purchased something and it was broken and they really needed it uh, for an event they were having. What I did was I listened to them. You know, first and foremost says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that happened, I apologize. I listened to them, I let them talk it out. As they were explaining the situation to me, they started losing steam and I said, okay, well, what can we do to make this better? They started talking to me about what would be a good solution. I said, okay, hold on, let me get my manager, let me get that approved for you. I went, I got my manager. We were able to talk to the customer, give them a refund, um, provide them with an additional product and solve their situation. And while they weren't happy because they, they were still a little upset that the product wasn't ready at the time they needed it, I could tell they were very happy with our response to it and they actually left on really good terms. So that's a good example, right? Um, there's all kinds of different types of answers you could give here, but it's really important to stay positive. It's really important to talk about the way you view it being okay with it, not being intimidated by it, and embracing the challenge of turning that customer's day around. And if you can do that, you'll do great. The next question is, tell me about a time that you overcame an obstacle at work 
what did you do? Now, this is a really cool question because it is so open-ended. You can literally look through your work history and pick from a handful of examples that probably meet this criteria, right? What I would suggest doing is use what I would consider to be a hero story. What is that? So that's a story in which you did something that made an extremely positive impact for your team or your company, right? This is something where you went above and beyond. You demonstrated a skill that most people don't have. The more closely you can align it with the work you would be doing for the role that you're interviewing for, the better. So this, this answer could be so blue ocean. There's so many different things you could do. Just pick something in which it is clear you went above and beyond, um, you showed resilience, a skill you have that most people don't was able to solve it. Something like that is good. Make sure you use the STAR technique, situation, task, action, result. Make sure you throw, uh, show enthusiasm and use a hero story and you will blow the interviewer away. Now, one of the other questions that you're going to be asked in the interview, I would say it's probably the most important question is why do you want to work at Home Depot? And if you don't answer this question in a strong way, they're not going to hire you. They're going to go with somebody else who can demonstrate more passion and more alignment. It's why I made this video here. This video here is going to show you exactly what you need to do to answer the most important interview question with Home Depot in a way that will absolutely make you stand out. So I am done here, but I will see you over there.